Hello and welcome to TV Cruise Channel's Guide to Cruising the Caribbean. I'm Julie Peasgood and in this programme we're taking you on a journey of discovery to the most popular cruise region. Think white sands, turquoise waters and an island for every taste. The Caribbean is quite simply the ultimate destination for some rest and relaxation. And here to share his Caribbean hotspots is travel guru Simon Calder. Welcome Simon. Thank you. And pretty much all ships all sizes and shapes go to the Caribbean, don't they? They, they do. They also tend to be there at quite specific times because, mm -hmm. of course, uh, from pretty much uh, June through to early November, uh, you're going to get some quite lively weather in the Caribbean. <laughs> if you're going for an island-based holiday, it's not a bad time to be there. You're going to get great prices and a lot of the time the weather will be absolutely fine. But uh, cruise lines don't particularly like the meteorological uncertainty you get. Yeah. So um, any time, you know, particularly around Christmas, right through to Easter, is very popular. And then they begin lots of ships, their annual migration across to the uh, Mediterranean. Yep. Do you think it's a good base for a family holiday, a good cruise for families? I do. And of course, there's so many different cruises that you can, you can take. But as a way of introducing uh, f children to a part of the world which it's actually quite difficult to get around. I know mm. I've tried, you know, yeah. island hopping by air or by ferry is, is fraught with problems. It's a lovely way of saying to them, look, here we are, here's, um, here's a Venezuelan island, Margarita. Here's a couple of traditional British West Indies, um, let's say Barbados and St Lucia. Oh, and look, uh, just, just beyond there, we've got the uh, lovely French island of Martinique. Yes. So a really good way of introducing them to different Caribbean cultures, um, as well, of course, as um, hopefully uh, uh, giving them some, some good weather and um, some quality relaxation time. Definitely. And it is, you know, they are icing sugar sands and azure blue seas. But what I've been amazed at um, when I've visited is how different each island is, the yeah. different personality mm. that it has. And that's crucial, I think, when you're planning to understand the sorts of islands that you will be visiting. Mm. Um, of course, one of the great things which has just happened in the past year or so is the way that Cuba is suddenly becoming a mainstream destination. Yeah. And you know, just in terms of scale, uh, the population of Cuba, the area of Cuba is bigger than all the other Caribbean islands put together. Um, and it's really important and much more of a kind of, as it were, I hope this doesn't sound disparaging, more of a proper country than yes. than, than the others. Yeah. Uh, and at the other end of the extreme, you've got tiny islands, you've got lovely, lush, beautiful places like Dominica, mm. tends to be served only by, uh, by smaller ships. Um, which is going to be a very different experience from the kind of, oh, well, let's get off the ship and find a, a handy beach where we can go and laze on. It's going to be somewhere for you to explore. So, so much choice, maybe even too much choice for a lot of people, which is why it's great to take advice from uh, a good uh, cruise agent yes. um, to, to, to find out what's going to suit you best. What are some of your particular personal favourites? OK, well, it's such a huge area that if I can sort of divide it into the way that it's typically divided, um, okay. Western, yes. Eastern, Eastern and, and Southern, southern. Um, because that, that then I, I can tell you my favourite area, Ooh. as it were. OK, so traditionally you have a lot of ships sailing out of um, Houston, Galveston in Texas or indeed New Orleans, going pretty much straight down across the Gulf of Mexico to uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, to the beautiful island of Cozumel, uh, beyond that to um, the city of Belize, former capital of the, uh, of the country of Belize, um, and then quite often to Roatan Island uh, off the coast of Honduras. Um, really interesting. For my money, a lot of time spent at sea. Mm. And the whole thing about the Caribbean, from my point of view, is that because there's so many islands, you ought to be seeing lots of different things rather, even if you're sailing past them, yeah. it's still more interesting than just sailing across the Gulf of Mexico. So that's the Western Caribbean that's typically described. Um, and it also includes places like the Cayman Islands. Um, the East, and, and of course, oh, Jamaica. Um, the 
uh, the Eastern Caribbean sort of begins at Cuba, but for a lot of the time that's been effectively off the map. So it continues with Dominican Republic, uh, Puerto Rico, which is a kind of 51st-ish state of the USA, mm -hmm. uh, the Virgin Islands, and goes as far as um, St. Martin, this um, fascinating island split between Holland and France. And then really the, uh, uh, the, the Southern Caribbean begins, and that's my favorite. And that is everything uh, really from kind of uh, uh, Guadeloupe, um, beautiful large French island in the north through Dominica, uh, Martinique, um, St. Lucia, um, Barbados. Oh, sorry, forget, not forgetting Antigua, of course, mm. uh, 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 up in the north there. Barbados, of course, slightly, slightly to the east, slightly out of the mainstream, uh, St. Vincent, uh, Grenada. Grenada, Tobago and yeah. Trinidad and then oh, oh, of course over to the left as you're looking at the map you've got the ABC islands um, Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao just off the coast of um, Venezuela and I just think because there's so much diversity so much interest in that southern area that that's where I prefer to be. Yes, I would agree with you. Um, we were very lucky actually because we went to, we caught the Trinidad and Tobago last day of the festival. What? The oh, carnival, fantastic. sorry, the carnival. Yes. It was magnificent. Yeah. I mean, the music was so loud, it reverberated so loudly, you actually felt it in the pit of your stomach. <laughs> but what an experience. And of course, you've got such, you know, some people say, well, it isn't the most cultured, you know, destination in terms of like somewhere like St. Petersburg might mm. be, which we've spoken about. But, you know, it has so much many different flavours, yeah, including and, the food. I, I think there is culture there if you look for it. Let's, let's talk about okay, uh, yeah. three of my favourite uh, destinations. That Barbados, extraordinary history of, um, of, of, of uh, colonisation, yeah. of uh, the way that um, the, uh, it, the slaves were you know, very sadly brought over, put to work, the whole history of the kind of uh, the, the, the aristocracy of, of Barbados, which is still there in 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 some of the um, old old manor houses on the island, that's to be discovered. In Antigua, you've got effectively Nelson's dockyard, um, so historically important there. And when you go to an island like Martinique, you know this is a very particular, very French place, with a, uh, which is effectively part of France. Yes, yes. Um, but um, you know, slight, slightly warmer and, um, and more humid and um, uh, <laughs> maybe a bit more relaxed than, than the mainland. Uh, however, I must say, and I know we're going to be talking about this, that Cuba is, of course, in terms of culture, absolutely the, mm. the, uh, the, the, the strongest island because, well, partly being bigger, it's, it's had more of a chance to develop culture and also being off the map. Uh, it hasn't been tainted in the same way that perhaps yes. other islands have been a little bit Americanized. Yes, yes, exactly. Do you have you been to Cuba a lot? Have you I've been to Cuba a huge amount, uh, mostly on land, but I, right. I know enough about the port. So Havana itself. Um, All those cars. Yeah. The cars. Oh, oh, sure. Yes, yeah. and, and that, that is that is um, real life. It's not. It's not. You know, just yeah. in, in in the. Uh, uh, in the glossy photographs, that is what life is like, because, of course, the American economic embargo meant that they had to keep old Detroit beer moths from the um, 1950s running, and they still do, and, and, and hats off to them. Uh, Havana itself is an astonishing place, uh, and I, uh, the, 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 with so many Americans now going in because it's got a lot easier for them to visit, it's previously off the map, for them, uh, there's a huge stress on accommodation in Cuba, which is why actually going on a cruise is a really smart idea, Very because good. they'll typically spend a couple of uh, nights tied up at, in Havana, which gives you plenty of chance to see it, but you're not going to be competing with lots of other people for a limited stock of variable quality accommodation. Yes, it's a bit um, like when you go to Myanmar, you know, it's actually a yeah. very good country to visit on a cruise ship, Yes, you know, because of the accommodation uh, side. And, and then other ports, so the, the key one is at the eastern end of the island, um, Santiago de Cuba, which if you had, if, if I could properly prescribe for you the best way to travel to Cuba for the first time, it would actually be to arrive in Santiago rather than Havana. Havana is wonderful, but overwhelming. Yes. It's the biggest city in uh, the Caribbean by a factor of, I don't know, five or something. Gosh. About two million people, I guess the nearest is, is uh, either San Juan in Puerto Rico or 
uh, Kingston in Jamaica. Anyway, it's huge and it's baffling and beautiful and everything. But if you arrive in Santiago de Cuba, um, at the other end of the island, it's much more of a kind of uh, manageable size, loads to see and really just to get into the Cuban way of doing things. And then often you'll sail from there to Cienfuegos, which is a beautiful city. It's uh, got a lovely setting um, on a kind of almost a, a lagoon. And it is one of the most graceful cities in, uh, in, in Cuba created from effectively the, the wealth of the sugar barons um, with all this wonderful 19th century architecture. Very refined, very, very special, even, you know, uh, even given all the extraordinary scenes and everything that you'll see in Cuba, it's a, it's a, a special place. So Cuba, definitely um, great to be, uh, great, great to be a cruise passenger there. Definitely. Rather than, um, perhaps travelling by land. I've never ever heard of a city described as graceful. Ah. That's very romantic. Well, it is. It's a lovely place and um, I've kind of seen it through the years. I first went to Cuba, oh, in 1989, Gosh. Um, when it was really quite different. Um, but even then, San Fuegos was, was kind of dazzling. And my goodness me, Cuba's been through quite a lot of uh, Difficult time since yeah. then, but it's uh, it's now emerging as as you know, one of the most sought after destinations in the world, no, yep. not just the Caribbean. Yep. Do stay with me, Simon. We've got lots more to talk about, and uh, do stay with us because we'll be back discovering more about cruising the Caribbean in just a few minutes. <music> Hello and welcome back to TV Cruise Channel's Guide to Cruising the Caribbean. Travel guru Simon Calder is still with me, I'm glad to say. Um, Simon, we spoke a little earlier about the eastern, western and southern itineraries, the very different sort of tranches of the Caribbean. I've heard that people can do back-to-back -back cruises as well, so you get to see two very different itineraries. Oh, you certainly can. Um, so typically you might find that uh, uh, a cruise company is offering maybe something out of the Western Caribbean. So going from Galveston in Texas down through uh, to the coast of Mexico, Belize, Honduras, um, coming up to the Cayman Islands and maybe going across to uh, the US Virgin Islands where it will begin another cruise that will take you down through the Southern Islands, uh, maybe to Barbados. Mm. Um, and the great thing about that is, of course, uh, it's while many itineraries kind of do the same circuit week after week after week, this will give you two very good experiences. Um, and I always find that if you are doing back to back cruises, the day in the middle is really special because yeah. <laughs> it's unlike most of the days where you've got a whole lot of people getting off the ship, all doing similar things, all getting back on. Most people are disappearing. And of course, you're getting new people, interesting you know, change of, of passenger. But that means that uh, actually the location you're in is kind of refreshingly uncrowded usually. Yes. So, so that works well. Yeah. But as with anything to do with cruising, you know, it's really important to pay attention to your uh, ports of call and also you might want to pay attention in the Caribbean to how you're going to get on land because uh, a quite significant number of islands you're going to be landing by tender. Yes. Which can be great the first time. It can mm. be really good the second time. It might be something that you think, yeah, I love tender uh, uh, landings. That's, of course, when when effectively the lifeboats are deployed to take you onto land. Um, it's. It can be a slow, frustrating progress, particularly a process if you're on a big ship with yes. lots of people to move. Yes. And you kind of got to build that in yes, to, you to your planning. You've got to factor in what time you're needed back on the ship before it yeah. you know, embarks again and, and work it out. Something that we've actually not discussed, and it's sort of more of a general point, really, um, is dress code on ah, board ships. Because yeah. in the Caribbean, you're probably going to no, want course. to wear as little as possible. But yeah. no, in the evenings and things, you know, are you a fan of, of formal nights? Uh, I'm a fan of finding out what is required uh, in advance. <laughs> and it, it, it does vary. And some ships, it just says, wear what you want, you know, effectively. But increasingly, they will say, well, you know, if you're going to be in some of the formal restaurants, yes. you're going to be smart casual at least. Um, and then they will often have a formal night. Uh, and that might be... Um, uh, jacket and tie for men and a, a nice frock for ladies. It might actually be 
and they've got to tell you about this in advance, proper black tie, yes. where you do actually have to have everything, you know, a tuxedo and, um, yeah. and, that, and if you're going to do that, well, that's quite serious. And that's also, of course, going to have huge implications for your luggage. Yes, um, definitely. So that's something to think about too. Personally, I think if you're in the Caribbean, it's not a formal part of the world. No, nope, it's not. I would be tempted to cruise, choose a cruise which did not involve, yeah, I might reluctantly put on a jacket from somewhere and find a tie and everything. <laughs> but, but no, I, it, it, it doesn't quite feel right. You know, you're there. It's a part of the world where, which is all about relaxation. Definitely. And I think on the, the, the couple I've done, you know, the, the sort of it might be Hawaiian shirt or yeah. whatever, you know, rather and yeah. a jokey evening rather than anything formal. But what, what, one funny thing though, which um, uh, we're not touching on Bermuda, which of course is not in the Caribbean. It's a, a good thousand miles or so out into the Atlantic. But a number of cruises which go to Bermuda, um, the dress code allows you, even on formal nights, to be in Bermuda shorts, as long as you've got proper long socks and loafers and um, a no. smart blazer. You're allowed to do that, yes. Because that is, you know, that that's formal formal dress in, yes. in Bermuda. I suppose it's equal so, to the kilt are. in Scotland, isn't it? It's exactly. Bermuda yes. Shorts. Yes. So so you can do that. Well, you can't. I can. <laughs> um, and uh, but whether I would, I don't know. No, uh, Bermuda, exactly. lovely lovely island, but um, target of another show. I think. Yes, exactly. But it's not in the Caribbean. Anybody no, no, who no. tells you it is. No. Um, with regard to the Caribbean, which is what we've been discussing, if you are a person who doesn't like flying, if you think no, I want to go on a cruise, mm. you know, I. Do, I I, you know, it's a long, long way away, but there are cruise lines that will take you there so you don't yeah. have to fly. You're, you're going to be best on a relocation cruise, which is um, typically going to be setting sail from uh, one of the European ports. Might be Genoa, might be Barcelona, might even be somewhere handy like Southampton. And that is going to sail across to uh, the um, Caribbean, generally end of October-ish. Um, and that's a really good way to get there because uh, it means you're going to um, not have to fly, obviously. You're going to be taking in destinations such as, well, if it's out of uh, Southampton, typically you'll go to Vigo in Spain, you'll go to uh, maybe the Canaries, Madeira, the Azores, wonderful archipelago, and then onwards from there, probably making landfall somewhere like um, uh, Barbados, maybe even calling into Bermuda. That's really good, but it's quite difficult to uh, not to fly one way because if you take a relocation cruise you're going to get great prices and everything else you're going to enjoy time there but um, the ship won't be waiting to sail back because it's staying there right. for the winter unless you're staying there for the winter with it exactly um, you've got to get on a plane to fly back yeah, which is why it's called a relocation cruise yeah. um, popular destination obviously for Christmas getaways if you if you are flying what are the most popular ports um, to fly to yeah, oh sure well and, and you know, what, what, what one of the most um, among the airlines the most popular ports are the ones where they're going to make most money um, which, <laughs> which tends to be Barbados is a huge port for, for um, yeah. starting uh, cruises Puerto Rico increasingly there's uh, now a new link from Gatwick going over there okay. um, uh, Jamaica not so much it tends to be that uh, cruises will call into Ocho Rios um, Actually, for the Western Caribbean, uh, Houston, Galveston, New Orleans uh, are popular starting points. But of course, Miami and Fort Lauderdale are the key locations for so many of these cruises because that's where uh, the, the cruise lines are, are based. Um, and that's going to be a very straightforward, um, uh, quick flight. You can fly to Fort Lauderdale from Gatwick to Miami from Heathrow and there's easy connections from other airports as well. Great. So that's the most straightforward one. What are we talking about flight time wise, roughly uh, ballpark? Uh, uh, 12, 14 eight, uh, hours? No, uh, nine, eight, nine hours going, eight, uh, seven or eight hours coming back. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, less it's, than it's, I thought. It's, uh, it's, it's not too bad at all. Great. Um, so, I must have chosen the very inexpensive airline. Oh, well, no, sometimes, sometimes the depending on the, you're going to be sorry you asked me. Yeah, depending on the aircraft type and uh, its configuration in terms of something called ETOPS, you may take a more circuitous course. And if you're on something like a Boeing 767, they ah. tend to be a bit slower and so on. But uh, okay. that's a whole new program. <laughs> <laughs> and on a personal level, on a personal note, what does the Calder family do? What do, they, what do you most enjoy doing when you visit the Caribbean? Oh, I, I think... You Personally, yeah, well, I think just just all piling off the ship in a new destination, going around and exploring it, meeting the local people, uh, finding a beach, 
you know, getting a bit of sun, enjoying the, the, the uh, crystal clear waters. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the day, getting on board the ship and um, uh, sailing off a, a new and exciting adventure. Yeah. Do you think that if for anybody watching who loves the Caribbean and has been to the Caribbean many times, are there any hidden gems or are there mm. any gems that are coming up that, well, we, we've spoken about Cuba, but any others that you Yeah, know? Oh, oh, definitely. I mean, Cuba is, is, is going to open up and it won't just be those ports I mentioned, Havana, Cienfuegos and Santiago de Cuba. You're going to get um, uh, the, the Isle of Pines, um, a place called uh, Nueva Girona, uh, maybe getting onto the uh, circuit for smaller uh, s s smaller cruise lines and then a couple of Colombian islands people don't tend to know about the Colombian islands no. um, Providencia and San Andres uh, which are slightly off the map in the southwest Caribbean but of course they can easily be tied in with um, a trip to Cartagena in Colombia which is for my money almost the equal of Havana in terms of its Spanish colonial loveliness. Gosh, and I've just seen on the screen behind us, you know, the, 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 the tail of a whale, the, the, ah. the um, doing, what's it called when it does the wonderful thing with it flips the tail up and then... Oh, uh, breaching. Breaching, as you know, I, I haven't seen a whale, but I have kayaked in the Caribbean and swum with turtles <gasps> when I did the Saga me. cruise, and that was oh. magnificent, you oh. know, um, a huge female turtle oh. and sort of coming up, you know, you're, you're searching you know for her initially and then she joins you and and then and then suddenly it's underneath you oh, you know and it's the most exciting thing what would you say is the most sort of exciting thing you might have done uh, there in the okay well I, I i think the first time you see havana is just a magical moment it is the most dramatic harbor i know of i was i think it's gonna say in the caribbean quite possibly in the americas Gosh. and uh what awaits on land is even more surprising and exciting. Oh, Simon, thank you so thank much you. for joining me. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Um, and thank you to you for watching. I'll see you again next time here on TV Cruise Channel. Bye for now.